Hello, I'm Daniel Tamage, and in this video, I will introduce you to the concept of a broker and run you through two different types you could choose to be the middleware for your event driven architecture and the pros and cons between the two. Hopefully, it will arm you with more knowledge than I had at the beginning of my event driven architecture journey. So, Hopefully you have learned from my previous videos about the pros and cons of event driven architecture and you're still looking to start your journey by either incrementally strangling an existing system or using EDA for greenfield project. If not, I'd advise you to watch the playlist on the top right. Now before I go through some of the types of brokers, here are four points to consider. 1. Routing, 2. Order of delivery, 3. Replayability, and 4. Retention. Now, please comment below if you feel there are others I have left off. But before we dive into the types of brokers, let's answer why do you need a broker in the first place? And the simple answer is, a broker allows distributed services to communicate in a loosely coupled manner. So the first message broker is what I call a standard message broker. And how do these message brokers work? Well, a publisher publishes messages to the broker and then the broker assigns the message to a queue or multiple queues based on a configurable routing rules maintained inside the broker. These rules allow you to group and segregate messages based on certain identifiers like priority or customer segment. Then based on the configuration that consumers provide to the broker when they subscribe to a queue, the broker assigns and pushes meshes to the consumer in a load balanced manner, which distributes throughput between subscribers, or by using a fan out approach, which broadcasts the meshes to all the subscribers of a particular channel or queue. Now, finally, once when a consumer consumes a message, they acknowledge that message, which removes the message from the queue. Now, that was a brief description of how a message broker works. So let's run through the pros and cons. And the three pros I've got here is, you have powerful event routing. Secondly, consumers can acknowledge specific meshes and also message brokers are normally lightweight and simple to use. However, on the flip side, the cons are, once a message is acknowledged, the message is removed from the queue. Hence, there is no replayability of the events or at least not without having to design and implement a supporting solution. Imagine if you need to replay a certain event or a whole load of events or meshes a month later because you have a bug in your system. And secondly, message brokers are not designed to keep meshes in the queue for long periods of time and can lose meshes if a persistent data store is not used. And if subscribers are not consuming or the back pressure becomes too great, then cracks can start to appear and there is a risk that they will stop working. So what are some of the message brokers on the market today? Well, you have AWS SQS, AWS SNS, RabbitMQ, ActiveMQ, Azure Service Bus, and Azure Event Grid. That's a six of them. There are many more out there. Okay, so that was a message broker. So what is the second type of broker we're gonna run through today? Now in the book, Building Event Driven Microservices, the author divides the two into two different camps, message brokers and event brokers. Now, unlike message brokers, where meshes are deleted, instead event brokers retain events. Now, in the book, Designing Data Intuitive Applications, the author calls event brokers as log-based message brokers and describes them as a hybrid that combines a low latency facilities of notifications with the storage capabilities of a database. Now I've linked to both the books in the show notes below, and I highly recommend both of them to anyone developing distributed event systems. Now in my view, it's much better to think of a log-based broker as event streaming platforms. And that is what Confluent calls Kafka. And Confluent is the company behind the development of Kafka. And it's also good to point out that Kafka AWS categorizes in groups both their managed Apache Kafka and their native streaming service Kinesis under their analytics section, not under their application integration section. Why? Because using event streaming platforms as your middleware provides so much more than a simple broker. 
Now before I explain why, please smash that like button and I want to know in the comments below if you're already in production with an event driven system and I want to know what was a gotcha. What do you wish you thought about ahead of time? Okay, so what are these streaming platforms? Well, they are logs of immutable events. The best example I can think of is a finance ledger or your bank account statements, where each record is an immutable fact in order of when it happened. And now compared to a standard message broker, when a publisher publishes an event, a log-based broker writes the event to the end of the log. The log retains events for as long as the retention period is set. Now this history of events in the mutable ordered ledger allows consumers to consume events at their own pace. And consumers can even replay messages by resetting consumer offsets. And being able to replay events is a very good ability to have. Okay, so what are the pros? So I have four here. And the first one is you have the full history of events, depending of course on the retention period, which enables event sourcing. And secondly, because events are retained, this enables you to reprocess events in order. And you can spin up a new consumer a month later and reprocess all the events. And streams are designed for high throughput. For example, AWS Kinesis is used for video processing. And fourth, it takes less effort to ensure that distributed data is consistent. For example, we can run temporal time-related queries and create short-lived temporary materialized views, thus removing some of the data inconsistency, latency issues, and application development headaches that would occur if you were trying to use event sourcing or keep data up to date in another database without using already battle tested streaming platform. Okay, so what are the cons? I've got three. Now, you can't selectively acknowledge messages. Consumers need to acknowledge messages before moving on to the next one or batch of messages. And this can make retrying failures quite complex. Well, not as simple as a standard message broker. And I will link to one of my videos on how to do this with a streaming platform at the end of this video. Secondly, retention storage can become very costly. And thirdly, low balancing and increasing consumers is not as straightforward as message brokers. Because with a streaming platform, consumer scaling is performed by partitioning topics or streams. A topics partitioning strategy needs to be thought of ahead of time because you can't just add a new partitioning and increase consumers in a running system. Okay, so that was the pros and cons of a streaming platform. Now, what are some of the streaming platforms on the market today? Well, firstly, you have Apache Kafka, and then secondly, you have AWS Kinesis, and then thirdly, you have Azure Event Hubs. Now, that's just three of them. There are many more out there. Okay, so before we land the plane, I just want to say I cannot tell you which type of middleware your solution needs as this will depend on your requirements and state of your architecture today. Now, if you are serious about events and want to move to event sourcing and real-time processing, you will want to use a streaming platform as your core middleware. However, stream platforms are not the silver bullet for all solutions that require loose coupled asynchronous communication. For example, I have seen Kafka being used to send time sensitive events that need to be consumed by subscribers running at a certain point in time. When a message broker like AWS SQS or AWS SNS should have been used because, because they wasn't, it caused negative consequences. Now I wanted to point it out because you need to choose the right tool for the job. I do not want you to be a purist or fanatical there is nothing wrong with a hybrid system that uses message brokers and an event streaming platform to deliver what the business needs. And on that note, please check out my other videos and smash that like and subscribe button.